What's up guys? Welcome to UCC. My name is Chris Pasek. I'm the lead pastor here. And today we are wrapping up our last week of this series called Cracked Vases and Empty Spaces. And the big idea of this series is simply this, is that when we feel empty, when we have empty spaces in our lives, well, we look to earthly things to fill us up. Okay, and today we're doing the last installment of this series of talks, and we're going to talk about relationships. Specifically, that when it comes to relationships, oftentimes if you're feeling empty, that's the right place to look. It's the right thing, but oftentimes we do it the wrong way. It's like this. It's like this. The other day, Tracy and I, we've been married 17 years, all right? And so, um, the bottom line is to get um, that feeling, okay, is that we have to maybe... um, can't just take things for granted, okay? Can't just live in whimsy, all right? And so we have to be purposeful, okay? And so Tracy has been doing some things like um, she's just been struggling with, with her health lately, okay? She's just a stomach bug. Kids have been sick. I mean, it's just been one of those weeks, okay, for us where we're just kind of a little bit tired. And so um, I decided I was going to be super husband, okay? Not super dad, but super husband. And what matters to my wife is a clean house, right thing, and I'm going to show you how to clean the house the wrong way, okay? Because um, recently, Elijah has allergies, and so we had to get rid of a cat, and bottom line like that. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to shred the whole house apart, and I'm going to clean, like deep clean the entire house, all right? And so I started upstairs, worked down to the downstairs. Look, I, we even bought a new vacuum. Look at that. Come on, man. Isn't that good? Like, that's good, okay? But I started cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Man, it was bad. I got five, okay? five big 55 gallon bags of garbage out of the kids room. I mean, I got them squeaky clean. I organized everything. I am doing everything. And then she comes home from work and I'm like, oh honey, come and see how I have served you. Right, and so she comes up, man, and I'm like, man, I got vacuumed. I like we even broke their, we, they broke their closet door. I I fixed that, installed a brand new one. Man, I got it all going down. Man, she's like, this is great, this is great. You know what? I'm gonna go draw myself a shower, and I'm going to go shower, and then why don't we have some dinner? Why don't we put the kids to bed and we can hang out? Now, I'm thinking the right thing was the right thing. Thank the Lord Almighty, like, I just clean the house, you know? And so I'm, like, skipping. I mean, I'm, like, man, it's, like, is it, is it 8 yet? It's 8. I'm, like, you got to go to bed. The boys are, like, our bedtime's not until 9. I'm, like, no, you got to get to bed. Get to bed. Get to bed, right? So we put the kids to bed. Man, we're just me and her. We're hanging out. And the next thing, we're cuddling. We're smooching. And then next thing, you know, I'm, like, baby, baby. Hey, baby, wait, wait. She's asleep. And at that point, if you've ever been there, right, you kind of like nudge her, you know? <laughs> you know, I don't, I'm just kidding. I mean, but I was like, oh, right? Why, why, why? Well, it was the right thing. Clean out is the right thing to do. But isn't it funny how there are moments where you can do the right things, but the wrong way. The right things, but the wrong way. Well, here's what I want to do. Okay, when it comes to relationships, I want us to understand, we're going to dive into the Bible that we were created for relationships, but oftentimes we handle them in the wrong way. And so we're going to get deep today. We're going to talk about some Hebrew words, talk about ourselves. We're going to really try to put a mirror up to see who we are in the mirror and then try to see how that works itself out. So if you have your Bibles, we're going to start in Genesis chapter 1. Okay, if you remember what happened, Genesis 1.1, Scripture says that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, okay? And so everything you see, everything you breathe, everything that we experienced, like God created that, okay? And then in Genesis 1 31, after he created everything, it says, God saw all that he had made and it was very good, okay? Meaning the sky, he looked at it and was like, that is good, okay? He looked at the grass and he was like, hey, that is Good, the stars in the sky, the water on the ground, okay? The duckbill platypus, still don't know why he created that, but God was like, good, 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 but not just good, but very, very good, okay? And it's not just the created things, but think about the highly emotional things. Think about what we experience. Think about the first kiss, okay? Our first touch, our love, okay? How we experience friendship, how we experience relationships. It was good, 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 very good. Good, and then Genesis 2 happens. 
And what happens in Genesis 2? What, what we immediately jump to is, oh, they sinned. Adam and Eve sinned. Well, yes, but before that, in Genesis 2, God starts to show us who we really are. And it says this in Genesis 2, verse 7, The Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground. Okay, I want you to focus on that. He took a man, formed him of the ground. A man and the ground. And he breathed in his nostrils the breath of life. And watch this. And the man. Say that word with me. And the man. Say it one more time because I know you're on camera and I just want to make sure you're saying it. Okay? He said, and the man became a living being. Now, hang tight to this because when scripture says man, okay, we know that the first man that God created was Adam, okay? But understand that this Hebrew word for man right here is this Hebrew word that we get Adom. Okay, and what that means is that this man, he was taken from the ground and that's where uh, the Hebrew word for ground is Adama, A-D. A-M-A, Adama, okay? So you have Adom and you have Adama, okay? And don't miss this because what Scripture is trying to do here is there's a play on words. And so then when God says, hey, this man I'm going to name Adam, it's a play on words to go Adom and Adama. Adom and Adama. It's Adam. It's saying that, hey, you're not just from the ground, but I actually formed you from the dusty earth. I then picked you up, I breathed life into you, and you became an Adam, meaning, meaning, meaning that who you are is fully all earthly being, and, and when God put his breath in you, Adam, that you are a fully spiritual being, and you are connected supernaturally together, both human and soul, it takes both to be physical and spiritual. Again, you might start to go, okay, hang on. I thought this was about relationships. Pastor P, what does this have to do with relationships? Well, I would argue everything. Because understand, to be a human, a dome. Listen, we have a physical and a spiritual side. And those two are so interconnected that you can't get away from them. In fact... It's what separates us from everything else God created. Like, think of this. Like, like, me and you can be sitting, having a cup of coffee, talking about consciousness, talking about morality, talking about right and wrong, right? What it means to be human. A dome, right? Like, we can have that conversation. Here's what I know. That dog does not sit down with another dog and go, what's up, dog? What's it mean to be a dog? Like, that, that, that don't happen, right? Like, they're, like, they're just, bark. Okay, that, that's all that's happening there, right? Right? They are, they act, they be, that is it. But don't miss this. For us, we are supernaturally made. Scripture says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. A dome that we are not just physical, but we are spiritual. And we have this soul inside of us. And so think of how that matters in a relationship. Say when you got the boy and the girl. Think about when you got the first touch. She pays you the first attention. He actually asks you out on the date. Think about, think about all the neurons that are firing, all the synapses that are making and bridging all the gap with the dopamine and all the other things that are tingles, right? Right? Like at that moment, let me, that is the human experience. And don't miss this. God created us to connect in that kind of relationship. So if you're lonely, if you're feeling like I need a friend, Maybe you have the inspiration and desire to have a husband or a wife. Listen to me, listen to me. That is a good thing. It's the right thing. So much so if you continue with the story, right? Genesis 2.22, Then the Lord God made the woman from the rib. He had taken out of the man and brought her to the man. Okay, the Adam. Okay, verse 24. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife. And they become, watch this, here's a new word. They become one flesh. One flesh. It's because Adam wakes up. He's like, oh, that's Eve. Eve wakes up and goes, oh, that's Adam. And their Adam, their, their spirit and their physical natures connect in such a way that scripture says this is the context for marriage, the ultimate relationship, because the two become one 
flesh, one flesh, one flesh. What does that mean? That they had sex? Well, yes, but it's actually a whole lot more complicated than that because one flesh, what that is, is that's the uh, Hebrew word uh, ekad. Akkad, and what Akkad means is it's being one physically, emotionally, and spiritually with another being or person. Don't miss this. It's when we take all of who we are, the Adam, the full life experience in our souls, who we are physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally connect so much so that you don't know where one starts and the other one ends, but they are so intertwined, so into each other that that is what it is. Now, don't miss that because that is what I believe most of us, when we say empty spaces, we're gunning to fill that spot. The problem is that's the right thing. Oftentimes we handle it in the wrong way. Think about Hollywood. They obsess over the Akkad. Make movies about the Akkad. Listen to me. Listen to me. Even God, do you realize God, when we get to heaven, he's going to celebrate you in an Akkad way, right? Scripture puts it this way in Isaiah 62. As the bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. So much so that then Jesus comes, sees that we're sinners, Bridges the gap, and in the ultimate statement, 1 John 4, 10, it says this, In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us. One to God with us, be so intertwined and intertwined in a relationship with us that He sent His Son to be the propitiation or the payment for our sins. Are you tracking relationship? Relationship is Right, but what we've been saying, we often handle it in the wrong way. Insert the church of Corinth. Okay, because again, after Genesis 2, yeah, Adam and Eve does sin. It ushers in chaos into this idea that God wants to have this ecod relationship with humanity, and then you, because you're in that with God, then get a mate, a soulmate, a husband or wife, and you share that with them, right? Well, because of that, here's what happens is that, well, everything, well, that's right, but it's the wrong way. And see, what happened is there's this guy named Paul who planted this church in a city called Corinth. Okay, and now Corinth, here's the thing, is that, that it is like, uh, essentially, like if you were to take Vegas and like multiply it exponentially with lasciviousness, okay? I don't, I don't know how else to say that, okay? But the point is, is that prostitution was normal. Prostitution was just a part of the being. And so sex outside of marriage, lust, all these things, it was bad. And so what's funny is Paul plants this church in this city. And what happens is, yeah, it's grace, grace alone. He starts to teach this relationship with God. And it takes about 2.5 seconds for them to say, yes, I love Jesus. Boom, they're buying prostitutes. Now, time out. I have taught a lot of things to this church. Like there's been moments for me as your pastor, I'll be like, you know what? I, I really got to lean into this one. Okay. Okay. Like this sermon, like, again, we're like, why are we doing a video sermon again? Because as your pastor, I'm like, I need to talk about this kind of stuff with you guys. And it needs to come from my mouth, right? It just, it has to happen. Okay. And so what's funny is that I, I've been led, go, God, man, I really need to talk about, let's talk about money. I feel led to talk about money. Talk about debt. Talk about debt. I have never been led to be like, you know what? We really got a prostitute problem inside of UCC. Let's do a series on prostitutes. Okay. I, I, I've never done that. But for Paul, what's fascinating, he takes a part of the Bible because what happens is this, this, Ikad, this idea of being so fully entangled with someone is so mingling is so alluring. Well, it's the right thing. God made that. He blessed us. One of the greatest gifts to marriage because it connects you. And so back then they had this thing called dualism. The idea that, you know, spirit and body are completely separate and that you can do physical things that don't affect your spirit. And you can do spiritual things that don't affect your physical, right? It's really a lot like what's happening today. Okay. And what happens is Paul speaks into this and watch this in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 12. I have the right to do anything you say. So here's what they're saying. They're saying, hey, if, if you believe in Jesus, you're saved by grace. I have the right to do anything, right? But Paul says, not everything is beneficial, right? You might say, I have the right to do anything. But Paul refused to say, but I think 
you should not be mastered by anything. Now watch this. You say, now here's the thing. They're going to talk talking about sex. You say food for the stomach, stomach for the food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, watch this. Paul says, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. Don't miss this. The church of Corinth was so perverted and so messed up that they were like, listen to me. If we are two consenting adults, listen to me, this is just our way of life. Listen to me, if just like you have an appetite and when you get hunger pangs and you fill your mouth with food, listen to me, they're trying to argue, that's all sex is. Is this just an appetite and this act is no different than eating. And what Paul says is, no, 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 no. Be that is a spiritual impossibility because of a cod. Right? There's this intermingling of the Adom, your person and your soul, and you can't differentiate that. And so what Paul then says is he says, listen to me, God, your body was made to have this ikad with God. He says this, do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute, okay, so, so the Elissa act is one with her and body, is ikad. He says this, for it is said, watch this, the two will become one flesh. That's, that's Ikad. He's going, hey, remember, go back to the beginning. The whole reason sex was invented, the whole purpose of this marriage relationship, this gift of soul mingling, taking your two adomes, your souls, and putting them together, it was for two to become one. It was to connect you deeply into your soul. He says this, but what whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in Spirit. And so here's the conundrum for Corinth, and it's the same for us. We have this appetite that when our minds and our hearts are longing for more, the empty spaces, we tend to fill it chasing in a cod with our Adom, with our soul. And in that moment, we end up doing the looking to the right thing, a relationship, but finding it in the wrong place. And the question becomes, what do you do when you have that desire? Right? Like, like right thing, the wrong way. We look at your marriage and go, I think my marriage, marriage idea is right, but I just got it wrong. Like I'm not happy in my marriage, right? Like what happens when you, you desire a relationship outside your marriage, right? Right? Like it's the wrong way. What do you do when you have these lusts? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Well, what Paul would say and what happens next is he turns the page and watch this what he says. I want this to land on us. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 18. He says this, flee. Say that word with me. He says what? He says flee. One more time. Say it right. He says flee. Do you know what flee means? It means run. It means get out of here. And he says this, run from sexual immorality. Notice he does not say run from sex because sex in itself is not bad. He does not say run from your marriage because marriage is not bad. Those are right things, gifts from God. But whenever we do them the way God says not to, it's the wrong way. And what he says is he says this word sexual immorality. Okay. It's the Greek word for, for, um, porneia. Okay. It's where we get our like English word porn from pornography. Essentially it's a drunk drawer word. Okay, what he's saying is that all things that have to do with sex in a perverted, lustful, outside of context marriage, what he's saying, run from those things. So what he's saying is that he says, do not entertain, but run from those things. Anything outside of marriage, run. He says, oral sex, any kind of sex outside of marriage, run. What he means is anything that makes you think about sex, Run, raunchy movies, run, adult films, run. What you stream on social media or on Netflix through reels, shorts, or series, he's looking at saying that if it inflames this thing in your heart, he is saying, run, 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 run. And here is why. For all other sin, a person commits are outside the body, but don't miss this. Whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Meaning, meaning, meaning that when you and I indulge in sexual immorality outside of the way God intended us to handle sex, 
What he's saying is that this is a different kind of fire you're playing with because you're taking your soul, your Adom. You're chasing something that you can't ever find and that you have the potential, the propensity that when you entertain these things, it scars who you are deep, deep down. And some of us know that all too well. But like some of us know, like you look back and you're like, man, I wasted four years, four years of my life with this person. And you knew from the beginning they weren't the one. But what happened? Well, you took your Adom and you mingled it with their Adom. And you were chasing and pursuing Echad and, and you thought you had it. But what happened was that bonding agent that's meant for marriage bonded you to the wrong person. And now, now, here you are going, man, I wasted four years of my life. Some of you just, it was, it was a night, it was a, it was a mistake, and you know, it, it, and you, you go, man, I wasn't, it wasn't supposed to hurt. We were two consenting adults. Why do I feel so dirty now? Some of you guys have an addiction to watching things. And so when you sit and think about it and you're going, man, I don't, I don't think I, I wasn't meant for that. And what Paul is saying is he's going that the allurement of Ikad, this so mingling is so strong, so thick that listen to me, when you feel it we're knocking at your door, you just don't mess with it, don't play with it, but run, but run, but run. And then what does he say to do? Watch this. Just keep reading. He says this. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? So he's starting to say, here's what you fill it with. You fill it with God. You fill it with the Holy Spirit. Who is in you? That's a whole other thing, and we're going to come back to that, because just because you sin sexually does not mean that God's Spirit is not in you. Hello. Listen to me. Jesus Christ came and died for your past, present, and future sins. And listen to me, listen to me, just because you're struggling does not mean God is frowning on you. He is trying to reach down to help you. Hello. And what he's saying is you need to stop, stop, stop chasing. Fill yourself up with grace. Fill yourself up with the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God. Watch this. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Watch this. Therefore, therefore, say this word over thee. He says, honor. Say it one more time. He says what? He says, honor. Say it a third time. He says what? Honor God with your body. Meaning, 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 don't ignore. We were built for relationships. Understand that is a good thing. The Akkad, taking your domes and mingling so much so that you know, one ends and one begins and you're just so enthralled with each other. It's the right thing to fill you up. But he's warning you, don't do it the wrong way. He says, honor God, honor God, honor God with your bodies. And how does this work? I think it works out in two different ways. Two different ways with two different types of people. Okay? And listen to me, listen to me, because I've thought, prayed about this. What does it mean? What does it mean to honor your God with your body? So if the relationship's right, we have an adoma soul. What do we do? What do we do with the Akkad if, if, you know, if you're not finding it right now? What do you do? What do you do? So the first group I want to talk to the singles. Okay? Because the messages like this, oftentimes singles feel like we're hopeless. And like this wasn't for me. And listen to me, listen to me. God's telling you. He's looking at you. Saying, if you've ever been tempted with lust, sexual immorality, he's saying, here's what you need to do. Fill yourself with God. Honor your body. Honor your Adom. What I think that means, if you're single, I think it means instead of playing with temporary pleasure, dive into the fullness of God. I think what that means, if you continue on and read in 1 Corinthians 7, he says, start to embrace this idea that singleness is a gift. And he starts to teach us, Paul, and I don't have time to get into it today, but what he starts to teach us is, you know what, go all in with God. And you know what I think that means? I think it means instead of complaining about what you don't have and about what boy you don't have, what girl you don't have, right? Instead, instead, instead start caring for yourself, self-care, right? I think it means hit the gym with that pent-up aggression and frustration and make your body a body that is exercising and taking care of itself to attract the person that you can be. I think you take your spirit, the dome, right? We're not just physical, we're spiritual. And I think you think, you know what? Who do I need to become to attract the man or the woman that God wants me to be? Rather than worry about what we don't have and playing with temporary pleasure, listen to me, listen to me. What if, what if we cared for, cared for ourselves like a temple of God? Say very physically and very spiritually, I'm going to prepare myself for who God will give me one day. 
I think that's what it means. I think your call, your call is, man, I haven't, I don't, that is me. And I think God would tell you, Paul would tell you, care for your soul, your don't. And I think there's a second group of people here, and I think that's the married people. Right? Because here's what I know, is that there's some people that are listening to me. And when I talk about the, God, you know, one person starts and ends, and you're just so intertwined with intimacy. There are sad hearts, because you wish that was you. You wish that was your marriage. Look, I don't know where you're at, but here's what I think. I think you need to honor God with your bodies. And again, I would challenge you as a couple, continue to read 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Just the first few verses if you're married. And here's what Paul would start to teach. He'd say, honor your body means that your body's not your own. You know what that means? It means that I think very physically you need to be together, very physically. And I started to think and pray through this and go, all right, well, what does this actually mean? And here's what I honestly believe. I honestly believe the first step, the first step that I think will bring more intimacy, more echad into your marriage so that your adomes will touch. Your souls, I'm not talking about sex, although that'll come. Here's what I would argue. Take the cell phones out of your hands. I think the best self-care, the best taking care of your body is not going to the gym, although I think you should. I think it's not saying I'm going to earn more money, although I think you should. It's not cleaning the house. It's not bringing home flowers. Here's what I really believe. All those things are great. You should do those. We should be fit for each other, bring flowers. Yes, 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 and yes. But here's what I believe, is I believe that our souls aren't touching, the ikad isn't happening, because you can have a husband and wife shoulder to shoulder after you put kids down to night, bed. Maybe you don't have kids, you can have married couples shoulder to shoulder. He's playing a phone game, she's on social media, you're shoulder to shoulder, yet you're miles apart. And what if, Put the phones down. What would happen as you would start to understand? I think we've lost the skill of connection, lost the skill of intimacy. I think you'll find that conversation is a little harder. I think what you're going to find is that connecting is a little bit more difficult, and you're going to be tempted just to go back to the phone. Okay, but 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 I think if you'll press through, we were created for relationships. It's the right thing. It's the right thing. And I'm telling you take the phone away. It'll be amazing the conversation that will begin to ensue. Oh, it'll be hard. You haven't done it in a while. We're stuck on our phones. But if you can get through the conversation, that will begin the touching. That'll begin the caressing. And that'll begin the intimacy. The Akkad. Because, listen to me, you and I, here's the lesson. We're created for relationships. We are created to do life together. Our souls intermingling so much so we don't know where she starts, she ends, and we're just so connected. But listen to me, it's the right thing, but here's the question, are you handling it in the wrong way? Let's pray. Jesus, God, I pray for our relationships. And God, I know today we talked about a lot of different Hebrew words, Greek words, all that kind of stuff. But God, I believe it's so, so, so important to know that we are not just animals. God, we are not just dust to the ground, but God, we are spirit and we are physical. And so these physical emotions and feelings to have relationships, they're right, they're good, they're a gift from you. But God, we are also a soul. And so God, I pray in the next few moments that you would strengthen our minds and God, I pray that as we take communion, that we would come back to the gospel, that we come back to knowing you, Jesus, is the ultimate relationship. And God, that if we just, through your son, Jesus, come to you, God, we know that just like we read today, that you're going to celebrate over us like a bride celebrates over his bride. God, because we were ultimately meant for a relationship with you. And so God, whether we're married, whether we're single, God, I pray in these next couple moments, God, that we would literally let our hearts open to what you want to do. God, I pray for the couples that they would look at what they're doing with their phones, where they even charge it, where they even take it in the house. God, I pray, I pray that tonight, tonight they would think differently about that. And that ikad would ensue because our adomes touch it. God, I pray, I pray for that. God, I pray for our singles, God, if they're here, that, 
that they would see that, that they will never connect physically with someone until they connect with you spiritually on that level. And so God, I pray that they'd take care of their souls, take care of their bodies. God, I think that they'd prepare. Use this time to prepare, prepare for what you have next. God, ultimately let us know relationships that fill us up are a good thing. But God, sometimes we handle them the wrong way. In your name we pray, amen. If you guys are watching online, listen to me. I want you to know we're here to help. So if you're single, listen to me. We have some single small groups we love to help try to connect you into so that you have some physical relationships. You can find each other. And so if that's you, I'd love for you to email me, info at unitecommunitychurch.com, or you can download our app anywhere. Look at our small groups. Love for you to do that. Or secondly, maybe you're married and you need help, like help. Listen to me. We're here. We're a church. We're equipped to help you find each other in a real soul mingling way. We are created for relationships. Problem is sometimes we handle them the wrong way. So I love you guys. Let's make sure we dive into this. Other than that, I'll see you next week.